option to record to all that. I don't even know that. Okay, hang on, let me just get my outline. We're technically recording, but I'll edit this. Oh, I always get so nervous. You see my face? Okay, I'm just moving over. Okay, do I start? Guys, I don't know why I'm so weird about this all the time. Hello and welcome back to the Her Life Vlogcast. Hello, hello. Hi. The band is back together, guys. I love when it's the three of us. It feels like we're coming back home. Don't you it's feel very it? wholesome. Very wholesome. And what? Our roots. Yes, and such a celebratory nature of today's episode because it's official. As, as of now, when we're recording this, we are all done with college. It's been a while for Emma, but we are all <laughs> officially done. This is Hello Postgrad. Isn't this hello. weird? Very bizarre. I, it's like hasn't hit no. me yet. So I keep thinking, what's the next assignment I have to do? Especially because finals just happened. So every single day I've been busy with yeah. papers and studying. So I'm just waiting. And I think it's going to be extra weird now to like transition out of like this feeling because it's like nothing really changes. Like we're all just still sitting in our bedrooms all the time. So it's going to be a weird, but <laughs> right. definitely huge congratulations to all of the classes of 2020, high school, yes. college, grad school, all of it. We worked hard and we made it. It sucks, but we're going to celebrate nonetheless because what there's it's all we could do. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. We've got to make the best of it. Exciting. And by the time everyone's hearing this, we're recording a little early, but We'll have had our virtual graduation ceremony, which is how Fordham's handling it for now. We still have our real ceremony to be postponed. I'm like curious when that's going to be, but who knows? Um, but yeah, so it's done. Hannah, wow. I can't believe it. I just keep thinking back to move-in day, freshman year. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I, I was not happy to be at Fordham. I'm very much a homebody. <laughs> I was just like, what the heck do I do now? I was crying the whole ordeal. It's just, it's, I'll touch upon this later too, but just to see how far I've come, like I've made it. Yeah. It's just a good, it's a good feeling, you know, you can trust yourself it. that you'll grow and do what you got to do. I know. Oh, and it does just go by so fast. But for this virtual graduation, we had to prepare a slide. Emma, I don't know if you know this, so we'll, we'll fill you in. You have like a virtual slide that I guess is played again. Yeah, I'm not really sure. This it'll already be done but you had to like send in a quote or something and I didn't know like what the vibe was like if people were going to be like funny you're supposed to send a picture in your cap and gown but my cap and gown has not arrived Hannah Me same either. right yeah no I got an email last Friday maybe come by this Friday I don't know I know I'm like fingers crossed because I want pictures at least like uh, give me that so hopefully we'll get that but anyway I just said we just sent like business profesh headshots and you had to put in a quote Hannah what'd you put for your quote I can't remember exactly what I said, but it had to do with Fordham becoming a second home and how proud I was to be a Ram now and always. So something sentimental. I was unsure to go the funny route or just be sentimental. I can't be funny on command sometimes, so I was just like... And that was my nice. thing. Like, is it going to translate? Like, your slide's only going to be up there for right. a little bit. Like, I didn't want it to be awkward. So I kind of right. just... I said something like, oh, I'm so happy to be a part of this class because we've showed so much like strength and resilience being like in the pandemic, but we're still like here for each other and da 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 da, which like I think is mostly true. Like I don't think I lied, but like also it's, it still sucks, but I was like, I don't make the best of it. Like I wouldn't have wanted to do it with any other class. I don't know. Like what are you supposed to say? So yeah, that's what I kind of put. But yeah, this episode is going to be all about post-grad stuff. Hello, post-grad. We're in it now. So we're going to do a lot of reflection, which is very much our vibe always, but especially now, because this is definitely a huge transition moment for us, but um, very exciting. Um, next, so this is going to be a two-parter. I love a two-parter, you guys. We can't, we can never cap it in. A two-parter. Next week, we're going to be joined by Alexis Schoen, who wrote hashtag entry-level boss, and she's just going to give us some, like, career advice and tips, especially now. I've been following her on Instagram real close. Her book came out today, the day we're recording, so she's just, like, living her best life and celebrating, so I feel like we both have this cool, like, culminating kind of thing where, I don't know, we're all just excited. So it's going to be so fun to talk to her next week. So stay tuned for that. But like I said, this week's going to be all about post-grad and reflection. And like Hannah started to mention like how far we've come. And it's just, I don't know. It's, it's good. I felt good doing the outline. Like you can always tell when it's coming together and it was just flowing for all of us. So I'm excited to dive in. With that, should we start our Her Reflections of the Week? Yeah, let's do it. Who wants to kick off with the H? Um, I guess I will, considering I am H. <laughs> hey. um, so I think I've been happy about the weather 
Um, well, okay, that's a double standard oh, statement, whatever. Um, it was snowing this past Saturday, so that's wild, but I'm excited for it to actually get sunny and stay sunny. It's supposed to be getting nicer. I've already got sort of my base tan going, so that makes me happy, getting vitamin D, and just really breaking up the space of time inside versus outside. It's just a break to get out and just do something if I'm just going for a walk or whatever it is so getting outside more for sure is making me happy and getting that sun yeah. I was gonna say you do look tan girl oh thank no. you thank you she got that summer glow <laughs> that base tan is on <laughs> I've been sp studying outside wink wink <laughs> <laughs> I love that yeah mine kind of goes along that I put running which is was a weird sentence for me to type running made me happy because I've had a very tumultuous love affair with running I always like I was a runner in high school <laughs> jogger I, was, I jogged like on the cross country team <laughs> but I've been running a lot recently and it was kind of for the same reason just to get out of the house and like have somewhat of a routine and to just kind of break up the day and recently I started going back to my high school to run there just to like break up the routine even more and it's been so nice to like run the old trails and stuff that we ran in cross country, like high school, and then just walking around like my high school campus and reflecting. Like it's just such a weird, trippy experience. And like every now and again, you'll see like a teacher walking with a mask and you're like, what? Dystopian? Like it's the weirdest thing of like, I don't know. But it's been cool to like reminisce being back in like where I graduated high school, now having graduated college. It's just a weird, trippy thing. But running is making me happy and it's freaking me out. It's weird. <laughs> Life is strange. I'm a Yuko now. <laughs> um, well, I guess going on this like active happiness, I, um, I've been doing kitchen dance sessions after work because listen, you got to let off some steam somehow. But the thing is though, my kitchen faces directly like into my neighbor's house, which is fine. You know, it's okay. You just have to embrace the twerking, I guess, and oh, just go for in it. The kitchen. <laughs> yes, I mean, it just has to happen. When Tootsie Slide comes on, how can you not just twerk? How can you not? How can you not? So, I mean, that's just like a good energy releaser for me. So, I, I do quite honestly look forward to my kitchen sessions after work. <laughs> I look forward to the snaps. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I guys. Do that. It didn't happen if you didn't snap it. And honestly, if you're not sending dance videos to your girlfriends, like you're doing it wrong. There's such a like, oh, I just love it. I haven't done it much since I've been home, but I think you're inspiring me. I might have to start it up. That's great, Em. I'm happy for you too. Okay, moving on. Excited? Han, you want to do excited? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so in lieu of our graduation, uh, completing our Fordham career and becoming a graduate. It's exciting. It's nerve wracking a little bit. Um, but for the most part, just happy to see that the hard work that I've done for the past three years resulted in a, a nice degree. So I'm excited to celebrate that in some way, you know, totally. until the real thing can happen. Right. Yeah. Mine piggybacks right off that. Um, I'm calling it GFH, graduate from home. <laughs> instead of work from home. It's so um, cute. Thank you. My mom is so wonderful. She's planning a farm graduation ceremony. So we're doing That's it so like drive-in style. Again, like once this airs, it will have already happened. But she's like, you got to prepare a speech. She's like, I want a list of your achievements. I will read that. And then she's like, we'll get you a little stand. Like you're going to, we'll get you a mic. Kylie's got the speaker. She's going to bring it. So I have this mic. Like it's all planned. So I'm excited about that. Like, that'll be a cute way to kind of, like, ring it in on my own again. Hope that the cap and gown comes. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited about that. It, it should be that's, fun. It's, like, that's not so normal, cute. but it should be fun. That's, like, a Hallmark movie waiting to happen. Like, uh, just this whole setting. Graduate Love from it. home. A farm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, that's what I'm excited about. It should be, I don't know. We're Like I said, it's all about making the most of it. I think that's the name of the game here for this situation. It's kind of all we can do. That's what we're going to do. I'm excited. Huh. Emma, how about you? Um, well, I'm super excited that this blog and blog cast has been getting so much hype. I mean, especially, Rachel, for you to be, like, writing a book review. Like, that is crazy. Like, who knew that, like, last September that it would be here? And I must say, like, shout out to Rachel for honestly holding this down. Yeah. <laughs> you like you're the glue. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely been using this like as a portfolio like it's helped me more like career-wise with applications and stuff so like 
it, like this has always been more like my major kind of stuff so I feel like it's been like <laughs> my other class like I've kind of treated it that way not in like I have to do it but just like I don't know so it, it applies to my career goals I guess is what I'm trying to say but no it's really I feel like recently and maybe it's just because we have more time to focus on it now being quarantined but like again that's a silver lining I think a lot of things are coming together we have more opportunities now and I'm also just happy like that we're broadcasting because I like it really genuinely helps me so much on a weekly basis to like reflect on how I'm feeling and like have a like longer discussion that's not about the coronavirus. Like, and also just like speaking to someone honestly. Yeah <laughs> like, outside of you. who you're quarantined with. Totally. Exactly. To see your little faces on Zoom brightens my day. It really does. So if we can do that on the Her Life blogcast, man, it's a win-win as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Heck yeah. That's a good one. Um, Emma, do you want to roll right into realization? Because you have a good one. Yeah, sure. Okay, so first of all, I can't believe it's been a year since 2019 graduation. Like, I honestly felt like I was just saying goodbye to you guys when you were, like, packing up and leaving. Um, and also, we all had unconventional graduations. Yeah. Um, for, like, background information, um, I didn't go to gra my graduation as well um, due to a rowing event. But I think it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of, who, who, would know, who would know that this would happen? You know what I'm saying? That we would all have this unconventional graduation. But I think that, like, that brings us closer, you know? I agree. And I think it forces us to celebrate in other ways, which we sort of did last year. I was, me and Hannah talked about this before. Like, I feel like we didn't support you as much as we should have during that because it sucked. Like, and I think I didn't realize how much it sucked yeah. until it's happening. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but it's hard until, like, you're put into that situation. Like, I don't even think when it was happening to me that I really understood. I think also because you guys were still going back next year, I, like, had a connection to Fordham still. So I thought that I was literally going to go back in the summer. But no, seriously, it's. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. But yeah, going off that, you kind of inspired my um, realization for the week too, because, and Devin reminded me of this one day. I was like venting to Devin about like how sad I was about senior year. And he was like, but honestly, we got to, you know, have experiences with Emma and Kevin and, and Sarah and all of them. Like we were able to get the vibe of that. Like there was a, a shift and a transition that we all kind of went through. So even though we didn't graduate at that time with you guys, I feel like we kind of mentally... I don't know, like worked through some of those emotions in a way that we didn't necessarily get to this year. And also like going to senior ball with you, like that was a thing that like wouldn't have had, like I'm so glad to have had that experience. So we got these little pieces of senior year through you guys. And like, I'm just glad that the years lined up the way they did. Cause I think we, it, it helped us all with the transition, I think. Yeah, I agree. I'm so thankful that we got to go to senior ball last year. Oh my God. So thankful. Cause that would have been tomorrow. Oh. Ugh, so I'm gonna wear my dress around my house. I already warned my family. I was like, just so you know, I will be in a gown all day, <laughs> and there is not a damn thing anybody can do about it. Cause I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, yeah, I guess my realization is just reflecting on time as well, um, because I've been having a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> I've been thinking about how much I'm like, what I'm going to be doing for the next few months, and just like what happened how fast it happened not only college but just this whole corona thing and like how we we went into senior year saying we're gonna have this so much fun and make it the best we could and I think we did do that in the time we had and I think like in life it because look how fast like this happened and, like the little things don't matter like just doing what makes you happy and like I just want to have so much fun and just well obviously once quarantine is over but just really yeah. I don't know set the world on fire I like St. Ignatius. <laughs> not, not like, like a, a violent way. It's like, not arson. Yes. It's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. It's from Fordham, okay? It's, it's, uh, not, a it's not arson, it's Ignatius. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just making the most of every day. I love that. That's a good, and I think it's so important now. It's just a good Thanks. thing to remind everyone of. So thank you, Hannah. I love that. Um, moving on to what is quickly becoming my favorite segment ever, Swoon of the week. I have so many swoons I've been finding. <laughs> so it's really hard for me to narrow this down. <laughs> I'm like getting so giggly. I'm just excited to talk. Um, but who wants to kick us off with a swoon? Uh, I guess I will. Um, so he's been around a while. We all know him and love him. B. Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Kind of random. However, uh, <laughs> I follow him on Instagram. And I am just blown away, like, 
absolutely blown away with how attractive this man is. He recently just became the cover of GQ Australia. And the photos, first of all, he has his dog in his photo. Automatic, like, 10 times attractiveness. And then the black and white filter, 30 <laughs> times more. And then, the, like, this man doesn't need it, but he's just so, oh, rugged and, like, I don't know if that's the right word, but his face is just so beautiful. He's just a beautiful human, and he's funny. <laughs> and I watch his movie Extraction on Instagram. Oh, sorry, not Instagram. <laughs> I'm getting carried away. On Netflix last night, and he's just so, it's just so too much. So he's my son of the week. Oh, what's her? I, am very I know you guys can't see this, but she's blushing. <laughs> I can't stop yeah. laughing. I'm so into this. I have a question though for the group. Like, for me, I've always, if I had to pick, I would go Liam Hemsworth. See, I originally thought that because you're you're a Hunger Games person. I am. You I still am. got the poster, I think. I'm like, I'm. I do. I do. <laughs> I have multiple in my room. Not gonna lie. I know you do. However, <laughs> I mean, like, if Liam were to come to me and said, "Hannah, come right. marry me," I'm not gonna say no. Right. No. But, I get that. Chris is just, I don't know, arguably more attractive, maybe in a different way. I don't know. They're both attractive, but this week is Chris. Maybe next week it'll be Liam. Who knows? Stay tuned. We'll see. Emma, Stay do you, Emma what would you pick? Uh, that is a hard one. I think I'm going to have to go with Hannah with Chris Hemsworth. I don't know. Liam kind of skews me out a little bit. I don't know <laughs> why. I think it's from the last song. Because he's so much taller. He's so innocent in the last song. That's why I like him. He's like this dopey, like, I don't know. He's kind of an <laughs> idiot, but he's endearing. Like, th is that my type? Maybe. Dude, I don't know. Are you picturing the scene where they're kissing and he has to, like, bend a whole foot down? Like, you know just, that like, that, weird? well, I was going to say that movie took, like, years off his next life, but also that whole relationship, <laughs> like, that was stressful, I'm sure. Oh, exactly. It's like, I want to give him a rest, because, like, I see the swoon of the week as a potential husband, and therefore, I think... You know, what's his name? Liam <laughs> needs to break <laughs> from women. I don't know. Him and Miley have been going at it for, for how long now? Well, it's not anymore. It's well, sad. I feel like he just needs to take a break. I feel like he's a sad boy now. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, I think he's thriving. Did you see a couple, like maybe it was months ago now. I don't know what time is anymore, but he posted on Instagram sometime in quarantine, like, this series of also black and white photos of himself. And I didn't even realize I was following him on Instagram, but that happened in like something inside me awoke in a great way. Like I was so into it and I didn't realize that. I reshared it to my story. I don't go resharing pictures of hot guys. I feel like that's a weird thing that like football boys do. They're like, oh, here's this hot girl I found. I'm like, that's weird. And I was like, I'm not that girl. But then Liam Hemsworth posts like a slideshow of himself. And I'm just like, yeah, repost it. Like, why wouldn't you? Well, here's what we gotta do. We have to take it to Instagram, and we'll do like a little poll. Oh, oh that's good. But that's a good idea. Okay. I'll put it down. I love that. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, interesting. But in any case, Hannah, great pick for the week. Thank great you. conversation around it. Couldn't get better. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, shoot it over to you. All right, I'll start with this. I have to mute myself because I'm gonna laugh when you're saying. <laughs> 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 okay. Here we go, guys. I'm going to start with this. I, you'll probably recognize it. And that's why State Farm is announced. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't say it. I'm sorry. I'm laughing too hard, so you can't say it. I'll, I'm going to mute myself and look away. Like, just say it. <laughs> oh, my God. I think I'm crying. <laughs> This has never happened. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm crying a little bit. Okay. Good. It's sweet. Okay. You can cut that out, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I did. I can't get it together. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm watching Sorry. Everyone. I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. This is the funniest thing. Okay. I'm ready. I'm not going to laugh. My glasses are fogging up. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, you guys mute yourselves right now. Okay, I'm gonna restart, okay? Okay, so for my swoon of the week, I'm gonna start with this. And that's why State Farm. <laughs> Can I just read it? <laughs> Your laugh is getting me. Oh. Get it together. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. You can do it, you can do it. Man, actors have a hard time with this. Okay. okay. Sorry, I'm going to put my screen over you guys because I, I cannot see you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so uh, for my swim of the week, I'm going to start with this. And that's why State Farm is announcing their good neighbor. I can't. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have the giggle. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So for my swoon of the week, I'm gonna start with this, and that's why State Farm is announcing their Good Neighbor Relief Program. I'm sorry, but have you guys seen the new Jake from State Farm? <laughs> yes. I'm so glad that you're doing this, Emma, because I can't even keep it together every time I hear the jingle. It's like right. something's happening. <laughs> Exactly, like and guys, we have the giggles. We have the giggles because it's so true. Like every time he's like, he says that, I'm like, wait, is that Jake from State Farm? Like Jake from look State Farm, from 2020 phone. is the hottest guy. I don't know why I'm so into it, but I'm so into it. The khakis, stop. Like, well, I think it's very much our type, Rachel. If I think it's so. It just is. If you know, I don't know. If you guys don't it's know what we're up. talking about, and you, you're picturing picturing the old. Jake from State Farm, that's wrong. You're wrong. Yeah, no. Like, we are not talking about, like, the original Jake from State Farm. We were talking very much a new. And now, right, he has this whole, like, good neighbor relief program where he's, like, talking about being, like, service for others. I'm like, give it to me, Jake. Oh. Well, the thing is, I have a question for you. Sure. I know, obviously, he's an actor, right? Right, he has to be an actor. He must be. I think Jake from State Farm is, like, a hot commodity gig. They're not giving that to anybody. Right. Yeah, so, I'm full blotching, guys. I have not blotched <laughs> in years. Like, oh my, geez, wow. it, no, it's a full blotch. I'm like very nervous talking about Jake. Go but ahead. If you if you look at the commercial, like everybody else seems like they're actual employees of State Farm, but then there's just Jake from State. Jake. <gasps> I also feel like there are some insurance agents out there who are just super hot. And, right. And I'm so sorry. I did not mean to like. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to say that you were like calling insurance people ugly. I'm just saying like there probably are, and I think Jake is giving them a voice. Hot insurance exactly. agents. Oh my god. You Jake. just got to YouTube the commercial. My gosh, and that's all I have to say about that because <laughs> that is such a good pick. I'm so glad that you picked. I could not agree more. I almost want to switch my pick because that's so good. I'm so into Jake from State Farm. Thank you, Emma, for that spoon of the week. That might be the spoon of quarantine. Okay, I'm done. Like, that's all I'm going to say. Okay. My spoon of the week is David Cornsweat, who you've probably not heard of by name, but boy, will you soon. I'm. Have you guys been watching Hollywood on Netflix? No. Uh, you know what? The... I guess the commercials look really yeah. interesting. No, you would be, I feel like it's like a period piece, post-World War II, kind of like 40s Hollywood, so glam, so dramatic, so, oh, it's just so good. And I think it's, it's pointing out really important things about diversity in Hollywood. Um, it, it Oh, it's just so fantastic. But this guy who plays the lead, Jack something, I forgot his last name on the show. <clears throat> he looks like such a Jack, though. He's just like such a, I can't explain it. He's just the most... <laughs> This is actually, I can't explain it very well, and I put it here in the outline. He is the absolute most conventionally attractive guy I have ever seen in my life. There is, like, he's just aesthetically pleasing. He's cast so perfectly in this because his face is just good. Like, there's nothing wrong with him. He was yeah. in, him up. He was in um, The Politician, too, another Ryan Murphy, which I couldn't get into. I don't know if you guys tried watching The Politician. I could not get into it for some reason. I don't know. People loved it. I wasn't into it. But Hollywood, I'm very much into. David Cornswood, I'm very much into. And I'm just excited to see what happens. I'm trying to, like, space this show out because I've been binging it so much and it's a limited series. But 
yeah, I'm like really into it. You have to look him up. Did anyone look him up yet? He's yeah, I did. He's he's handsome. He's just like a he's very right handsome. conventionally attractive. He's like yeah. no one would disagree. Does is the picture of him in like the cap, the army cap? Is that from Hollywood? Yeah, is it yellow? Yeah, it's like a yeah. So he works color. at a gas station that actually is like for gigolos. <laughs> it's the crazy. <laughs> guys, this is the craziest show. You, I'm so excited for you to watch. But I do have um a a critique, if I may about Netflix original. I'm like seriously so warm talking about all these. I'm sorry, like I'm really watching. I'm glad this is in video. Um, but I have a critique of Netflix originals and for that matter Hulu originals, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. I think it's excessive the amount of swearing and nudity. Like I get that you can because it's a streaming service, but do we need to? Do I need a boob in every other scene? No. <laughs> no. You? I don't. I've also noticed this because, and especially because uh, you know, we're usually watching movies with my family, so then I'm, it's just, like, uncomfortable, and um, it's just, uh cringy. I don't think it, at, like, I think the show would be just as good if you just said, like, what the heck instead of what the F, and also, yeah. like, didn't show as many boobs, and also, like, why are the women always naked and the guys are never naked? I think that's sexist. Preach. That's my soapbox for today. I'm just, like, over it, and I'm also watching Big Little Lies, same kind of thing, like, it's just a lot. We can totally- That's also very violent. <laughs> So yeah, like, you can't binge that, I feel. Like, you got to really take your time because it's, like, heavy. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, this is the perfect segue into our content catch-up for the week. Week-ish, because we don't do this every single week. But I have so much to say <laughs> about content that I've been into. I need to, like, take a break. I'm like, talking so much. I'm sorry. That's, like, the point of this. But anyway, I'm just excited because I have a lot to share with you guys. So this week on the content catch-up, we wanted to, like, kind of keep it sort of graduation-focused-ish. Really, that's just because I'm watching, like, too much stuff. That's all we have time to do. So I wanted to, like, narrow it in a little bit for, for my picks anyway. So I'm going to run through a few. <clears throat> Number one, let's start with books because we're educated ladies. Um, I got this book for Christmas this year. It's called Freshman Year of Life. It's a collection of essays that says essays that tell the truth about work, home, and love after college. So I thought, hmm, this seems to be a good thing. I left it at school, unfortunately. It's like right on my desk, but oh well. What I read so far was super helpful. I'm also like very into the essay collection genre. I think that's like a really good way, especially if like you're not into like reading lots and lots at a time. Like, I don't know, they're just good little snippets of like, hmm, I learned about finance or I learned about love, like just really quick. And I was very into it. I wish I had it now, but... I guess I'll be getting my stuff back soon. Who knows? So yeah, that's something that I hope to be reading soon, but that definitely aids the transition, like nail on the head. That's literally what it's about. Another thing that I'm reading right now, in the moment I brought it with me, This Side of Paradise, F. Scott Fitzgerald. Obviously a classic. I've tried to read this book literally half a dozen times, and I, like Emma knows, I've tried to read this book for years. I cannot get into it. I don't know why, but I'm forcing myself to read it before graduation. So by the time this airs, you better believe I'm going to have it done. I'm about halfway. It's just kind of sad because it reminds me of Fordham, obviously, because he's, like, in college, and it's also Princeton, so it's very, like, I don't know, my mind, Princeton looks just like Fordham. I've never been there. I have no idea. <laughs> but, like, I don't know. I'm just, like, it's making me sad, and it's making me, it's all about, like, coming of age, you know? So I feel like it's making me question my own coming of age. I'm like, have I? Am I of age? Like, what does that mean? Like, am I there? Like, I don't know. What would my novel of my life look like? Like, what would F. Scott Fitzgerald say about my character arc? Like, I'm nervous about it. I don't know why it's stressing me out so much. That's but funny that you should say that, though, because I literally searched books that you should read after college graduation. And literally, like, the number one is The Side of Paradise. So I didn't know that it was so sad. And I don't know if it's supposed to be. I think I'm projecting oh. a lot. I think it's supposed to be, like, because it's about this, like, super arrogant guy who, like, goes to college thinking he's, like, the hottest shit. I'm, am I trying to say that? I'm sorry. He thinks he's, like, the hottest thing, and he goes to college, and everyone's kind of, like, reel it in, buddy. But then some people are, like, yeah, we want to be friends with you. So it's just, like, weird him trying to find his way in the world and, like, his transition year to year of him, like, getting to know himself and then himself within the Princeton community. So then I'm, like, how much of my identity is really just Fordham? Like, that's the question I'm asking myself. I'm, like, is that going to exist now that I'm gone? It's just, it's, it's tripping me out. I don't know. And I didn't bring my journal, so I can't even journal about it. Guys, I'm spiraling. Well, that's, that's an interesting point, too, because all we've known for so long, like, literally all of our lives is how to be a student. It's just, yeah, it's okay. Like, because I said to my mom earlier today, I was like, wow, this is weird because usually, oh, summer break. And then, oh, it's like, oh, I only have a few months until August and then I'm right back for RA training and welcoming the freshmen back and all this stuff. So it's just like, there's no that this year. So it's 
it's weird. Like, what am I supposed to do? Not be, a, not being a student, right? I'm sure Emma, you can speak to that, like how that was. Oh no, definitely. I mean, it's just like funny to, I don't know. I think honestly, because you guys are still at Fordham, I still feel like I'm like a student with you guys, but like have like an internship. I don't know. It's a funky feeling. And I think it's going to be definitely a transition again for like all of us. But I don't know, like to your point, Hannah, it's like you've worked so hard to graduate. Like that's the whole point of us having an education. So like, what's the next step? That's always something that's always on my mind. It's trippy for sure. So I don't know if that was like a glowing recommendation for this novel, but I feel like it's something that just like, I don't know, smart people told me to read. And so I'm like trying to really just fulfill it, but it's bringing up a lot of questions, which is probably the point. Like that's what good <laughs> books should do. So I guess it's working. I'm just like, Phew. but anyway, I'm not going to brighten it up anymore with my next content catch up pick because I have a lot to say about this as well. Normal people. Normal People is a book that one of my good friends, Kat Scan, Catherine Scannell, recommended to me when I was like, hey, what should I read in quarantine? And she was like, Normal People, you got to read it. So I read it, got it from the library right before it closed down. It was like the nick of time. Got the book, read the book, made me very depressed. I don't know why, but it did. I just was like slipping it. It felt like a depression. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. That's how I felt. Like I was slipping. So I was like, oh my God, this is like, why is this book so, but first of all, impressive for a book to do that like to have like 200 pages of something that's like random letters on a page to make you feel all of the feels like that is just literature is cool hmm, i'm an english major but i'm just saying so it made me feel a certain way and then i had to like watch a lot of glee reruns to like make myself feel joy again this sounds so dark but like quarantine's weird like i think it's important that we're voicing emotions okay Moving on. So I read the book, got over it, I'm living my life. Then Hulu drops an original series based on the book. So I was like, oh God, here we go, round two. And that's exactly what it is. I start watching it, split. I'm fine. But I'm not. Like, it's so sad. I don't know why people are watching it. If you watched it and liked it, I'm happy for you. But, like, aren't you sad? Uh, what's the this, premise of it? Yeah, the background on so, it. So, like, it's this love story that follows these two young lovers in Ireland. They're, like, in high school together and she's like lame and no one likes her and everyone's super mean to her and then there's he's like the popular jock boy and he like falls in love with her but like doesn't tell anyone and then is like mean to her in school so that's just like its own weird thing gross i'm like respect yourself girl don't be with him gross then they end up going to the same college together and then the roles kind of flip and like she's all cool and artsy with her like friends and he's like lame and no one likes him and she's like ho ho how the tables have turned but then the same thing keeps happening and they just kind of keep missing each other and it's like, you want them to end up together, but also not because it's like super toxic and unhealthy. And like, I, I just feel like they're both better versions of themselves when they can do their own thing. But it's also like you're rooting for it. It's just very troubling. And I don't know how people are binging it because I can't watch more than like half an episode at a time. And also like the soundtrack and like the cinema of it all. It's a very sad. So I'm not going to recommend it. There, I said it. Sorry. Like I don't, I'm not going to, I wouldn't read it. I wouldn't watch it. I wouldn't read it. Sorry. <laughs> but again, know. important that art can make us feel that way. Like, I get that that's the point of it, but like, there's enough sadness. I don't need any more. <laughs> this is a lot. I'm sorry that I'm like just rapid firing. I'm really excited to hear from you guys, but I have one more that's also <laughs> going to segue into a weird conversation, but one that's, I think, important to have. Let me get myself together. I'm like really blotching. Okay. Okay, so next content, Girls Gotta Eat podcast. We talk about them a lot. I love those girls. I think they teach me a lot about a lot of things. Um, but this week was kind of a more serious episode for them, which was cool to, first of all, just see them in that setting. But this episode was called I'm a Survivor, and it featured a sexual violence educator and healing coach named Brittany Piper. And it was obviously, like, trigger warning. She talked about her, like, journey with you don't say journey with sexual assault. She talked about her personal sexual assault that happened to her when she was 20, I think, and her like literal 10 year journey of like getting to a place of healing. And now she talks about it and helps other people. And it was this kind of like triumphant undertone of like owning your trauma and like making, like growing with it. That was kind of my main takeaway is like, that's always going to be a part of you. And I can't speak to it. I haven't had the experience, but like, it's always going to be something that's a part of you and learning to grow with it, which I think you can apply to a lot of things. But I think it, it was interesting that that episode happened this week, and I don't know if they did this intentionally, but if you're paying attention to, like, politics and the news at all, there's just been a huge Title IX law update um, from the Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, which just have a lot of 
troubling new regulations that we wanted to touch on a little bit. I think it kind of like pinged in all of our brains because of the all the RA training we went through. Like I don't know if I'm, I don't want to speak for you guys, but that's kind of why like we got a lot of training on it, and it's always been a contentious issue, um, like with Fordham Res Life, to be honest. So it just I don't know. I feel like I'm always like hypersensitive to these issues, but I just wanted to give a kind of an overview of what these new regulations are and what they mean, particularly on college campuses. So, okay, let's get into it. I reached out to Emma Budd, who is the Vice President of Health and Security of Fordham um, United Student Government. So she helped a lot with just resources that we'll definitely link for you guys here. But essentially, these new regulations, I'm just going to list a few. First, schools can ignore sexual assault that happens outside of school programs, which means like off-campus housing, which is like not great. And study abroad. Yeah, study abroad. And even like if one of the people is like from a different university, no go. Like, the, I don't know. Not great. Number two, um, colleges and universities will have to allow live cross-examination by a quote representative of each party, which essentially means that a survivor could be directly questioned by someone that their rapist picked to question them, which just seems like... Very messy. Right, like you're already giving... The person who had the power more power like it just it's messy i don't like it um it also shields schools from liability for ignoring or covering up instances of sexual harassment or assault on campuses like why are we making that easy to do i don't know i'm very troubled by all of this what else schools are only required to investigate the most serious forms of sexual harassment and assault which i don't know that one like made me the most mad i think because it's like why are we ranking different people's trauma like i don't you shouldn't compare like how am I I don't know like I just think that's so wrong I don't know I like I know I'm putting a lot of my opinion into this which obviously is my opinion but I don't know it's just very tr troubling I think from a female standpoint especially and then finally it opts for this like medi what they're calling mediation over investigation which essentially says like can't try to handle it yourself first which for a lot of like conflict in life might be a good approach but probably not with sexual harassment I don't know, the accused, you know, then has the opportunity to confront their accuser, but also vice versa. It just seems messy. What do you guys think? Also, I think the new definitions that they put in place are definitely hard to prove in a court setting. I don't know. I think that there's just a lot of messy aspects to it. And I think we're all, um, I think, passionate about this topic since yeah. we were like RAs and perhaps had to help in some of these situations so we're kind of again to like Rachel's point we're just more sensitive to these topics but we just really wanted to come on here for you guys to kind of just understand what's happening in the world yeah. especially since we are like go go females and for sure also males though, also males, though. I don't no, want and an important thing that, that I that. yeah we maybe should have prefaced with is like obviously this happens and like LGBT community obviously as well exactly um and I also just want to say like I don't I certainly like don't have any authority to be speaking on this I just think it's something that like caught our attention in the news and I don't know we have sort of a platform with this and I think it's important to just like talk it out because it is it's troubling and I don't know that, I'm like nervous even talking about it because it's just not like I'm not totally uh, this isn't our vibe like this isn't what we normally do but like I said I just think and it was interesting that I listened to that podcast literally today as this is all going down and I just I don't know I think what all I took away from all of this is that we kind of do have a lot of power just in the way we talk about it and I think having open dialogues like this one even though it's uncomfortable like I'm not comfortable talking about this this isn't like fun um and like I said it's kind of a departure for us but I don't know, I think it reminds us that like empathetic listening is important, whether a friend comes to you with their story or whatever the case is, not being afraid to talk about it is something that I've been working on. I think especially like we said through all that RA training and everything and that's something I plan to take with me post-grad is just, I don't know, just being able to talk about it openly because like this is real life and it happens and it also happens not in college, which I think is important to know. We were talking about that before, it's easy to get stuck in the Title IX like what are the regulations with your title line coordinator in your school and blah, 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 but it happens in the world. So I think just hopefully talking about it will help us make sense of it. I don't know. What do you think? No, definitely. I think it's important that, especially since this is like a post-grad episode yeah. that like, e even if you're not in school or anything like that, don't be afraid to speak your mind either to your friends or to your family. Um, or even there's also hotlines that you could go to if you don't feel comfortable to. And of course we'll um, link those yeah. below as well. But again, we just wanted 
to, I guess, spark interest if you guys were interested in this topic. Um, so definitely educate yourself on this um, and go out into your, well, don't go out right now, but right. Uh, go into, <laughs> you don't do that. Um, but may, the, perhaps there's like community platforms that you can become yeah. a part of. Even like I think Emma, Emma Bud has put a lot on her social media and I knew to reach out to her. Like she was a resource for me who obviously knows more than I do about it. So that might be a good person to look to. P people like that in your circle who might have more information. And we just wanted to say if you are in the university setting, because we know a lot of our girls are still at Fordham and other colleges, um, the thing to do is just to talk to your Title IX officers in your schools. And just because this is, some of these things aren't legally enforceable anymore doesn't mean that Fordham as an institution should, you know, neglect to do so. So, I don't know. It's just good to be aware. That's our little politics-ish thing. But also the fact that this is even considered politics is gross to me because it's like the female body. But what, that's a whole, another episode. Anyway. Thank you for like, I don't know, listening if you listen to that because I don't know, it was weird, but I'm glad that we thank you guys for like indulging me on that because I think it's important, like I said, just to talk about it. Now for an awkward transition out of that because I really don't know the best way to handle it. Um, what else are we watching, listening to, content? Let's, let's lighten it up maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I could go um, because in our little outline here, um, I guess Rachel kind of wanted to have me talk about either books or podcasts or music that helped me during my transition after mm -hmm. postgrad. So um, definitely like I went to more of the nostalgic aspect and I made a scrapbook uh, about like my Fordham journey and that definitely helped me although it was sad but it was really I guess exciting and reflective to see all the friends that I've made or all the experiences and that it's funny that you literally can look at a photo and like photo and like go and like play like place your it was wait i was happy you, that. you just like tripped down and was like look at a photo look at a photo look at a photo so i <laughs> <laughs> like don't know what happened but there was some kind of glitch <laughs> oh really oh okay. yeah no but you're fine i'll be able to edit it out but just like go back to look at a photo uh, <laughs> <laughs> like is it just me um, and then exactly. i also heard it i heard okay, it okay. okay so i'll start with okay i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah um and it's funny that you could look at a photo and kind of place yourself in that environment and kind of just imagine like what, where you, what you were doing at that time, which as sometimes it's like, okay, it's time to move on. But I think, I, especially like after postgrad, you're allowed to feel that way. So yeah, I would say that. And I would also listen to my playlist that I've made like specifically for say like spring weekend or something um, or events on campus and just bring me back. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Thank you. Hannah, anything off the top of your head? Not really. I'm thinking about getting my mom into the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I think that's going to be our new venture. A good thing to rewatch, too. Yeah, and since it's all the three seasons are now out, it'll be good for her to binge because she's not so patient with, like, oh, I have to wait a year. So I think we're going to get into that, but I, nothing too crazy, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I've been getting bored with TV, which is crazy. When If you know me, like, I live for TV and movies, so, you know, quarantine's hitting hard, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but at this point, sometimes I just go to bed. I'm like, oh, I'm just I'm yeah. bored. I'll go to sleep, you know? Okay. So, not too much, yeah. but... One other thing I wanted to um, mention, I hope that everyone has already watched this because I think it's such a, just, oh my God, it was such a thing for me to watch. I just am so moved by it. Michelle Obama's Becoming, the documentary on Netflix. I read the book, obsessed with it. Now the doc is out. Emma, you watched it, right? Oh, it was amazing. And it, it's not like a documentary on her life. It's about like the Becoming tour, mm -hmm. which I think it's interesting to see like her life after the White House. Because when we were about to watch it, my mom was like, is this just going to be, like, off the book? Like, we just read the book. And I was like, I don't think so. But it was honestly, like, I had tears in my eyes. No. From, like, start to I just think it, there was something very profound about it. I can't explain why, but every single person who I've talked to who's seen it felt the exact same way. I, I just can't speak highly enough about it. And so perfect, I think, for this transitional moment. You know what I mean? Of just, like, what are you becoming, Right. So should we right, do that? Yes, yes, yes. I think we should do that. At the end of the documentary, they do this big, like, empowering, like, I am becoming blank. And they, like, say. So I thought that might be a good exercise for the three of us. <laughs> I can kick us off. Um, and this is just fun to think about, too. But 
for me, I think I am becoming, I know, I am becoming a more authentically confident version of myself. I think for a long time, I kind of faked it. You know what I mean? I was like, oh yeah, just like, I don't know. Sure. Like I feel comfortable doing this and I'm like super confident about X, Y, and Z, but I feel like, I don't know, the fake it till you make it kind of worked. And now I feel like I'm there just like in general, like with people, with guys, like I'm just feel like I'm coming into my own a little bit and like, I don't know, it's a good feeling to like feel that switch to be like, hmm, here I am. So I feel good. No, I think you're so right, Rach. I was definitely going to say like from soft, knowing you sophomore year to like where you are now, it's like, we always text each other saying like, could you, would you think that like sophomore Rachel would think that this is okay? <laughs> no, I, it's like literally a whole nother world, but I'm excited about it. Like, I, I don't know. We've just grown, I think, in ways that I wasn't expecting to. But I'm happy that it happened. I don't know. I do. I'm, I'm, we're new. We're, we're different versions, and I like it. So cool. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going to happen next? Like, who knows? I don't know. Anyway, who's next? What are you becoming? I could go. So I am becoming a more – I'm sorry. Let me start up. Rachel, fix that out. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm becoming more comfortable with myself, um, especially in the past years, probably growing up. I was quite the shy and like anxious teenager, I would say. And I would also say like in college too, like freshman and sophomore year, I was, I literally did not talk to anybody. There, I said it. Um, But now I'm kind of seeing that I can take these like attributes that like my shyness and like anxiousness, and then I could kind of just be comfortable um that I like have those attributes I guess um if that makes any sense um it's just that I know that that's part of who I am and that's how I kind of get to know people that it's okay that I'm shy um in the beginning but then I I open up and you guys know that like I'm a thousand percent (laughs) I'm not (laughs) shy but that's um, like almost like surprising for me to even hear that because I just don't even like remember that side of you you know what I mean because we've become so close so yeah I really just feel like you've come a long way yeah even before I met you like knew knew you when you and Rachel were I was like oh I have to be friends with them I was like they're so cool like I was you you just did not seem shy at all I was like oh if anything I felt shy I was like okay like how do I prove myself (laughs) you know he's in I made it guys (laughs) spoiler alert (laughs) Made it. <laughs> we had a meeting one day, me and Emma were like, should we? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for accepting me into the committee. <laughs> we're like, without uh, her, we're just, er. <laughs> er. <laughs> yeah, that's no fun. <laughs> um, and I also wanted to say, I'm also becoming a more proud Asian American woman. Yes. I feel right like on. not. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think because I am adopted, I never associated myself as being, like, Asian. But now I'm kind of, like, more interested in understanding the culture of it. So I think I'm growing up, man. I love that. that. Very exciting. Oh, awesome. I feel so warm and fuzzy. I love this. (laughs) Hannah, what about you? What are you becoming? So I touched upon this earlier, but I've definitely noticed how much stronger I've become. I've no longer – yes, I still get – you know, nervous about new things, and as everyone does, but going back to, again, that freshman move-in day, I definitely think that, oh, yeah, like, no sweat, like, going to school, whatever, like, that's no big deal, and just the things that can come up, like, I know that I can handle them more now, and trust myself more to be able to handle them, like, I have all the tools that I need to do so, so it's pretty exciting to see, and just comparing myself throughout the years, which is cool, and also, I'm I think, like, you guys also helped me bring this out of me, but I've always been weird and, like, funny and whatever, <laughs> and I just, like, let it out, <laughs> um, especially at the RHO hour and the front desk of South. That's, I think, like, my weirdest points, but honestly, don't regret any of it, and I'm happy to be weird. So yeah. don't stop being weird. Just let it out. Let it out. I think oh, if, I people, if people judge your weirdness, then they're not your people. It really is as simple as that. It's I so believe true. that in my whole soul. Oh, I think we are good amount of weirdness together. I think the three of us are becoming closer friends and just like a better support. We're already a great support system for each other, but I think we're just learning new ways to support each other throughout. Because now, okay, 
starting now, like our lives are branching in different ways. Like we no longer have that like one thing, which is like the Fordham Rose Hill campus that is keeping us together. You know what I'm saying? So now I think it's just going to be as interesting to watch like how our relationship dynamics change in quarantine in post-grad in all of it. And I, I'm like not worried about it at all. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's a cool reassuring thing to have because I don't think that's the case with all relationships. No, for sure. I think, I think that as well. And I'm, Oh, you guys are forever friends. I know it. Emma, <laughs> I feel so emotional, but what a good place to wrap up part one, wouldn't you say? Hello, postgrad. So. We're going in with positivity. Oh, Ooh. I love it. Thank you guys for listening to part one. Remember, part two next week. It's going to be so great. I'm Hannah Legerfo. I'm Emma Spoldy. And I'm Rachel Malik. This has been the Her Life Blogcast. Yay. Okay, good. Let me end it, and I think I have to start a new thing.